Hello and welcome to Friday's Reflection. I hope your week's been a good one as the, as the days get shorter and the, and the first frosts approach. This week I've pondered much on my time in Norfolk and uh, on one particular day we spent time at the, at the front and on the pier and we visited the RNLI Museum and it was really moving. He told a wonderful story. It was there was a gallery and a ground floor and as you went round you learned of all the people who'd served, all the lives that had been saved and as you went up and on the gallery you could look down into the actual lifeboat and you saw how, how small it was in comparison to the huge sea. And one thing that struck me that I, I didn't know, and of course it, it, it would have been, but I'd never really thought about it, but during the war, the average age of lifeboat crews was, was much older than, than um, peacetime because of course so many people were called up. And there were people in their 70s going out to save people, to rescue them. And there was one man, Henry Blogg, whose story really touched my heart and he'd been awarded several medals and he was a very quiet man unassuming who who didn't really push himself or, or or stand in the limelight but he rescued so many people and he rescued a dog that he kept with him there was a lovely photo of him with that dog and the thing that really struck me was that he couldn't swim this man who, who had a, a, a real calling to save lives couldn't swim and yet he went out into the treacherous waters on this little boat and, um, and rescued many people. And that made me think of other people too. It made me think of, I don't know if you remember the Zeebrugge, the ferry disaster, and there was a, a guy who became a human bridge and rescued, I, I can't remember exactly how many people, but how incredible. I, I think of the incident in Liverpool um, where the taxi driver thought about what might happen and locked himself in to try and protect people. Um, how incredible is that? It made me think how we are made in God's image and there are times when uh, our own lives aren't as important as saving others. And I think that's really deeply moving. And there's a scripture I'd like to share with you. Um, and then I'll just, just explain a little bit, a bit about why. And it's from the Gospel of John, and it's chapter 10, verses 11 to 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who's not the shepherd and doesn't own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand doesn't care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there'll be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my father. And I love that scripture because it reminds me that no one took Jesus's life from him. He willingly gave up his life for us. 
and I find that really moving. And the other book that I loved, and I've read the scripture many times, but it's so interesting, isn't it? How each time you read it, something different is highlighted. And it's a bit where it says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the father knows me and I know the father. And from that, I'd never thought about what Jesus might be saying. I got the bit, I know my own and my own know me, but it was a comparison, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and how well the Father and Son knew each other. And we are privileged to have that same relationship. And I thought to myself, I'll never be a, a lifeboat in a lifeboat crew. I, I've never gone out and saved anybody or done any of those incredible things. And then I thought God was showing me that there are many ways that you can save lives. Actually, many, many ways. There are some why you, you go out and you're a firefighter or you're a lifeboat crew or um, ambulance service, whatever it is. But there are small ways that you can save lives, aren't there? There are things you can do. You can give. Um, you can give, uh, if you think of malaria and the devastation and death that that's caused, uh, you can give so people can get malaria nets. There are many ways you can give to save lives. Uh, I guess giving to medical research ends up as saving lives. But also on my heart, is it's not just about saving lives now, in our time. It's also the people who come after us. Surely we have a responsibility. Indeed, the Bible tells us we've been given dominion over the world. And um, surely we have a, a duty and a responsibility to make sure we do as much as we can in order that people don't die from some of the results of climate change, the extreme weather conditions and all those things. And so there are many things that we can do. Some of them are high profile and some of them aren't. And one of the things I love the most about knowing Jesus is that he works in the ordinary and the mundane and the nitty gritty. Yes, of course, from time to time, there are incredible things that happen, supernatural things that happen and miracles and all of those kind of things. But day by day, he's at work in each one of us. And we won't know the part we've had, not just possibly in saving lives physically, if you like, but spiritually, salvation, we're all called to share the good news of Jesus Christ, aren't we? The love and the hope that we have in him and what he offers. We all know that, that he desires all men to be saved. So I want to finish in prayer, but I really want to encourage you to see the worth of your own life and how you can choose to lay down your life for others in myriad ways. Um, and I also pondered on, so often we think in our own time frame, don't we? I hadn't thought about uh, life before lifeboats or life before lighthouses. And we have so many things that um, enable us to be safer in some senses, but in other ways it almost makes us more fearful of things. Uh, there were hundreds of years, thousands of years without lighthouses and um, it must have been so very hard. And so I don't want to take anything for granted. It's so easy to take things for granted, isn't it? The things that we have today, the things that we have all around us, it's just so easy to take for granted and to criticise and not to give thanks and have a grateful heart. So I hope I've inspired you in some way to see that your life really does matter and your life in Jesus' hands can really make a difference. So I'd like to end now in prayer. Almighty God, our beloved and heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word, Lord, your living word. We thank you so much for the hope that we have in you. Help us, Lord, to play the part that you've called each one of us to play. 
to know when you're calling us to lay down our lives, to know when you're calling us to take them up again. Keep us close to you and close together and bless us that we might shine brightly to those who are lost and somehow steer them closer to you. Amen. Hope you have a great weekend, whatever you're doing. I'm going to a firework display, which uh, friends have every, every year. And it's a wonderful event. Um, it's one of the markers of my year, just to reflect on, on what God's done through the year, on what he might have said to me, where he might be leading me. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I'll be taking my grandson with me too. So that's extra special. So I hope you have a really great weekend, full of joy, full of peace and maybe even opportunities to save. See you next week.